right, hello everyone. Now, my name is Charles Roop, and I'm here to kind of give you a little tutorial on something I've recently learned about. Uh, it's called Parent OS, how to install that on a virtual machine. And this is something I'm attempting to do because I recently found out about it. I'm uh, kind of a newbie in this whole field, and I decided, you know what, let me try to dabble into this a little bit and kind of explain um, a little bit on how to install it. Say, if you're a newbie like myself trying to get into more of the cybersecurity, networking, or just want to tinker with things, a uh, way to install it. Now, uh, this may come at a cost because I had some issues earlier installing this on uh, called something called VirtualBox. That's a virtual machine software. So basically, you install an OS on top of an OS. Uh, but I ran into some issues, uh, plenty of issues, uh, on VirtualBox VM. The best route for me in this case uh, would be Parallels. So basically to explain this, uh, Parrot OS is, rumor on the street is more of a user-friendly uh, Linux kernel based operating system. Now Linux, keep in mind, is a kernel. The kernel! There are different versions, different flavors, so to speak, of Linux. This one is Parrot OS, like there's Kali Linux, there's Ubuntu, which is a bit more basic, bit more for everybody. Uh, Red Hat Linux, which I believe IBM has a big part of. So there's a lot of ver versions of this, and this is Parrot OS. So what you will do is you download uh, from their downloads page. I'll leave a link in the description below. You can download that, I already did that, uh, and save it to your uh, save it to one of your directories. I saved it on the uh, main directory, made a folder specifically for Parrot OS, so you can be able to pull that out instead of leaving it in the downloads folder. So what I will do now uh, is I will go ahead and create a new virtual machine. I already have in the control center, I have Kali Linux. So we'll go ahead and create a new virtual machine. Now it'll tell you, you can get Microsoft 11 or Windows 11 from Microsoft. Of course, there's a fee involved with that. Uh, but there are other free systems out there. I guess, like I said, Ubuntu, uh, their CentOS. I haven't messed with, messed with some of these. It's, I've used Ubuntu once, it's been quite a while though. Uh, but you don't see it on here, that's okay. You can install from uh, a DVD or image file, or ISO file. I'll show you that in just a second. So I'm gonna click on that, go to continue, and there it is, Parrot. Go ahead and open that. So we'll go ahead and continue with that. We're gonna call this, uh, let's see, uh, Parrot OS. Uh, we can save it in the main directory, it's fine. It's gonna take about six and a half gigs of space. We can do some customization with the settings a little bit later on. So we'll go ahead and create. Now we'll go to hardware. So basically we can use, if you want, the full recommendation of, um, uh, I have four gigs of RAM in my computer here. So we'll go ahead and uh, use that, or eight gigs, excuse me, eight gigs of RAM on my 2018 Mac mini, two processors. So we'll go ahead and leave it at that. Advanced, uh, all this is fine. Graphics though, we'll use the, um, leave on auto. We can turn off 3D acceleration. We don't really need that. And then we'll go to network. Now this is the issue I had before. We'll go to bridge network. We'll go to ethernet, in my situation at least. So we'll leave ethernet for the um, bridge network. It'll work, this will work. Parrot OS, hard disk drive, it'll use that disk capacity, 64 gigs. You can change this if you wanted to. Um, we can decrease that if you needed to. I think maybe 32 gigs or so, uh, maybe 40 at the most. And we'll leave it at 30. I don't expect to use a lot of space on here. So we'll apply. It'll give you a warning, resizing the disk, sensitive to power failures, similar events. So definitely back up. We'll go ahead and leave it at that. We'll close that out. We'll hit OK. And we'll continue on. And then we'll go ahead and X out of this. And hit continue. Of course, I'm on a trial. I'll just continue the trial for now. All right, and here we are. So we'll go ahead and uh, this may take a while, so we'll go ahead and try to install. Like I say, this seemed a lot smoother than trying to install this at first on a um, on the, on the virtual machine box. Now this threw me for a loop at first. Apparently this is a little different than your typical uh, OS. For instance, you see a box that says, oh, go ahead and install, kind of like with Kali Linux or any other uh, piece of software. This takes you to a user interface, it looks like a desktop, but you're not really done yet. Uh, you have to install the Parrot. And we're gonna go ahead and start running that now. Make sure I'm clicked inside here, there we go. So it's gonna ask you some questions. Uh, uh, go ahead and just do American English, 
Execution time, default. Now we need to go to erase disk. No swapping in this case. We'll go ahead, uh, put that master boot record in that uh, drive. So we'll go ahead and enter our name and information. Okay, now uh, we'll go ahead, location, keyboard, partitions, all that set. We'll go ahead and run that install. So we'll go ahead and say yes, install now. And uh, this may take a little bit, so we'll see how this goes. See if it's a little bit faster or better uh, compared to uh, the uh, virtual box. Okay, uh, it says we're all done here. Um, so now the issue I had with uh, the virtual box was that I would restart and it didn't install. It would still say the window uh, uh, still have the box to go ahead and install the OS and all the settings and passwords and whatnot. I set the usernames did not save. So I did it again, nothing happened, did it again, nothing happened. So I went looking around trying to figure out what it could be. I couldn't really find any good answers. That's my kid you probably hear in the background, by the way. <laughs> so um, we'll go ahead and uh, restart now and uh, see if this actually works or not. Okay, now, okay, this is good because I didn't see this before. Good, okay, so we're set. We'll see how this uh, runs. Parrot Linux. Ooh, okay. One, that burp you just heard was not for me. A life of parenting right here. He drank almost all of his milk. Anyways, uh, now we are uh, ready to log in, it looks like. Okay, it looks like we're in. Although I don't like the fact that when you expand this, it doesn't adjust, you know what I mean? It just makes everything look stretched. System preferences, displays. So we'll go to displays at least. Uh, let's uh, put this on as close to 1920 by 1080 as we can, I guess. And hit apply. Okay, keep this configuration. It looks good. Okay, so basically it has uh, everything you need here. The applications on the top uh, left corner. You also have, you know, internet access. One thing I found interesting, there's a Tor browser on here. I've never used it before, but that's uh, that's what they have here. Uh, graphics, sound, video, uh, the VLC player. You see that just about anywhere. On the top right, you do see your processor usage, uh, your memory usage, and even uh, transfer within sending receiving your network it's your ethernet connection also of course the date time down here on the bottom left that is uh, any windows that you have open there's a menu down here kind of similar to windows as well it looks like uh, something very similar uh, on here as well uh, to the top uh, left well so you go to all the apps here I need to do a little bit more research in the tools uh, that they have on this as well. But from what I've heard, it's a bit more user friendly uh, for the intro crowd uh, as well. So I decided to do a little bit more exploring uh, on some of my downtime. It's probably not a bad idea when you install a new OS to go ahead and run an updates uh, just to make sure everything's squared away. Of course, there's a lot on here. Uh, so that's uh, uh, Libre offers some of that as Python, nonetheless, not a bad idea to get those uh, potential bug uh, patches squared away. Okay, and then uh, that's basically the gist of it. That's how you install, that's how you get it on at least in uh, parallels. Kind of new to this, this is the first time I ever used Parrot OS, so, well, with the exception of Hack the Box, they had that at, at their, their VMs uh, to practice some of their um, stuff, but for me, this is the first time installing it, so I need to tinker with it and see what else I can find, do more research on it. But at least for those who are interested, you can do that in a virtual machine. If you don't have a lot of machines sitting around or don't want to spend money on getting out a laptop. So if you have any questions, comments, go ahead and leave them on there. If you want to see other videos, uh, please let me know on which topics as well. I'm a newbie, so bear with me as I kind of learn along the way. Of course, I'll find something cool or interesting out of it. Be sure to make another update, at least blog post, or even on there. Go ahead and follow me on my social media accounts. Don't forget to like, subscribe, click all those buttons and things. And uh, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you again sometime later.